If you'd like to support the content on this channel, I have a LibraPay account. It's like Patreon, but open source. Because I'm a glutton for punishment, and so that you folks don't have to, I'm going to be giving a quick look at the Microsoft Edge browser for Linux today. Now, it's only been out for a day, and I haven't really had that much time to take a look at it, nor am I overwhelmingly interested, but I thought, just for the uh, sake of curiosity, we could just take a quick look at the Microsoft Edge browser for Linux. Now, this is still the development version. I've played around with it a little bit. I've tested it on a few things, uh, but this, uh, I've taken away all the config files, and now this is what you would take a look at if you were opening the browser up for the first time. Now, one of the things that I did find a little bit interesting on the installation, and it's available as a .deb uh, file, and I'll link to it down in the description below so that you folks can have a look if you also uh, are a little bit curious. But the interesting thing that I found out about it is that uh, the configuration files are actually saved in the .config folder in your home directory, which uh, is, you know, respective of, of some of the desktop environment standards, which is nice, rather than just sticking a dot folder right in the middle of your your home directory so you know it, it's a little bit respectful respectful of your um of your you know directory structure just off the bat and i thought you know all the ins and outs of it it is uh, it is worth giving it a, a a bonus point for that um also when i installed it it did actually outline of course in case it was uh, not already clear enough that this is a proprietary browser and it does use the blink engine but this is uh, it did actually say to me in the uh, installation process that it was proprietary which i thought was good um but that's more of a uh, that's more of the the soft the ubuntu software center uh, and i am trying this on ubuntu or to be fair more specifically zubuntu which is just ubuntu with xfce uh but yeah interesting that it does use the uh, the blink engine um, and also that the icon for the Microsoft Edge browser just looks a little bit like the uh, the Chromium uh, browser icon, just a little bit, you know, similar colors, similar shapes. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's uh, let's accept the uh, godforsaken privacy policy and get started. So it gives you some cosmetic stuff, and I, I think, to be honest, we're largely going to just be looking at the surface level cosmetic stuff. Uh, I know that there are some uh, some issues that people have had when it comes to uh, under the hood technology, when it comes to things like um, uh, the uh, hardware decoding and all that business. But this is actually quite a high end computer that I'm running this from, and I probably wouldn't notice much of a difference if it was uh, using any kind of hardware decoding or, or just using the CPU for it. So. That, to me, is a little bit inconsequential right here. Um, but inspirational information. I've got inspirational. Nice little pretty picture. And I do like a, little, I like, do like a good pretty picture. Uh, I must admit, I do give uh, a disproportionate amount of praise to Linux distributions that come with a good set of background wallpapers. It's something that I kind of like. And I guess, in some ways, it does sort of uh, outline that they've just you know focused you know they they paid some attention to the smaller details the shall we say maybe less important details of how a Linux distribution is put together and I think it generally makes it feel like a more complete experience but that aside informational so you got some some news um we've got some brexit there we've got some us election um the surprising truth about cremations in colford how about that Okay, but anyway, uh, or we've got focused, which is uh, would probably be the one that I would choose. You know, just a good focused. Um, and there we go. Now, um, obviously, on first launch, it gives us this sort of like um, selection of blog posts. Which, uh, to be honest, I, I I'd had a bit of a scan through. They're kind of interesting if you're interested in the technology behind the browser. But uh, in all honesty, just from a personal ideological perspective. Uh, when it comes to most proprietary software, there are, of course, uh, a number of exceptions, but most proprietary software is, to me, not as interesting as open source software because, to me, I see uh, proprietary software as a product, you know, like a just something that you that, that, a, that a, a corporation or a company will just provide to you as a, as a, as a product. Whereas with m the way that I see open source uh, software is more of a project, as a coming together of a community. Now, that's obviously, uh, you know, there, there are obviously uh, corporations developing products that are open source, and there are communities that come together to build something that isn't necessarily open source. So there's obviously uh, overlap and, and differences there, but um, 
but but to be honest, some of these 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 blog posts were kind of were kind of you know worth a scan. I I guess I guess maybe. But um, anyway, this is actually a good opportunity to uh, demonstrate one of the features that they have here. So you go into this this blog post here, and we can add it to a collection, which is a little bit like the pocket thing that they have in Firefox that no one seems to use. I, I don't use it. Uh, and, and, and to be honest with Pocket, it's one of those things that it's like, eh, it's one of those things that Firefox have included that eh, should they have really, really, you know, those that want it are more than capable of getting the add-on and those of us that don't want it have to go through the rigmarole of, of going into the configuration screen and, and, and actually disabling it, which is, you know, it, I don't know. It just it's 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 a minor irritation, I guess. But anyway, so this is this is like a sort of a convoluted um, bookmarks or favorites um, sidebar with, with without added stuff that you don't need. So there we go. So you can you can add a page and it adds into some sort of favorites there, uh, and then you can just uh, yay. I'll accept those cookies if you must. And um, yeah, there you go. It also does come with favorites, so. There we go, a favorites bar there. Uh, I do use favorites quite a lot. Uh, in fact, that is the primary reason why I am, uh, why I do use Firefox and subsequently Firefox Sync, because being able to sync across my bookmarks to, to all my devices is really useful. But also on top of that, uh, I do actually find a great deal of convenience and a great deal of usefulness in just being able to send a website to a different device that's um, that's also synced up. I find myself just using that quite a lot. Uh, I don't know if it necessarily, you know, seems like the most useful thing in the world, but it's it's it, you know it's something that I just use quite a lot. And the Microsoft Edge Sync facility, of course, is is here, and it would have had to have been, you know, Chrome offer it, Firefox offer it. Uh, heck, I even think Pale Moon offers it. Um, and to be honest, if I didn't use the the sync thing, I probably would be on something like LibreWolf, which is you know. It's basically Firefox, but with just a lot of the stuff you don't need taken out. But, uh, yeah, um, or would would have, would have, would need to have been included. Really, it would have been an ominous, um, uh, you know, sort of absence if it was uh, if it was not included. Uh, also, yeah, you can you can press this button here to to send feedback. Um, so you know, uh, Google have a lot have that. I believe on the bottom of a lot of their websites, but in, interesting that it's here in the browser. Uh, I I would imagine they take that out once this has graduated past the development release, but time will tell on that one. Um, and then yeah, you've got a menu here which looks very similar to what you might see on its on on the competing browsers. Um, so we've got web capture, which you can just do that, and then you can copy it to I presume the clipboard. Not quite as full featured as Firefox's screenshot tool, but it's kind of a nice it's nice to have that there um, you've got apps install this site as an app so manage apps um, okay well I don't have any apps to manage so uh, and we can do extensions and we can get extensions for Microsoft Edge this is exactly what you would expect it looks rather similar it looks a little bit similar to like the Firefox but perhaps a little bit more like corporate-y, I guess. You know, you've got Amazon Assistant there, Evernote, DuckDuckGo, Norton WebSafe, Microsoft Editor, um, Xbox Tab. So it's a little bit, mu you know, like it leans a little bit more into Microsoft than, than Firefox. I did see, so you, you've got, yeah, you've got three ad blocking um, uh, extensions right out there on the front page. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, Although that being said, if memory serves correctly, I don't think Microsoft have that many services that are actually ad supported. There's probably like Bing or something. But, you know, it's not like they, they don't have a YouTube uh, or a Twitch where advertising generates the uh, primary source of revenue. I'm sure I will be corrected in the comments on that one, but um so I guess they are less disincentivized to include them. Apologies for the double negative there. Anyway, that might be an incentive to to include some some ad blocks there. Uh, interestingly, they could go completely like full on market disruptor and include um, like uBlock Origin out of the box, and it'd be interesting to have seen the reaction to that. Um, so there we go. I'll have a quick look in the settings as well. This is actually kind of sort of 
seems a little bit more uh, intuitive than the Google Chrome settings. Um, so you've got some privacy here. You've got the clear browsing data. Uh, you've got the appearance. Oh, yeah, you've got a dark theme. Points for a dark theme. I do like a dark theme. Um, we've got family safety here. I have no idea what that is, but I assume it's some kind of like family family filter. Uh, languages. Yeah, so it's picked up United Kingdom nicely. Uh, yep, and it's selected. Uh, so that's, I assume, taken from the operating system. Um, let's see. Phone and other devices. So you can sync to your phone. Um, default browser. No, thank you. Will not be making it my default browser. Cookies and site permissions. So um, let's take, for example, location data. So don't ask. Ask before. Will block if turned off. Okay, so you can just you can just block location data. That's good. Uh, Adobe Flash, eh? If turned oh, okay, so Flash is blocked by default. I don't know if that's got anything to do with the fact that I don't know. Have I even got Flash installed? I don't know. N probably not unless it. Not unless it go. Oh, well, I think. I mean, Flash has been dead for ages, let's be honest. Um, ask me what to do with each download. Download location. It's it's everything there that's, that's what you would expect. Um, I did test it with Google Stadia, and it does work with Google Stadia. I also tested it with NVIDIA's GeForce Now, which is NVIDIA's streaming platform that allows you to stream games from your some games from your Steam library through uh, the browser. It is not compatible with the Microsoft Edge browser. So far, it seems to be only compatible with Chromium, and I assume Google Chrome as well, although I've not tested it. So not the Microsoft Edge browser, even though I believe that the Edge browser is capable of doing it. It could very well be the case that NVIDIA have just not tested it or are not confident with the Edge browser, uh, doing it with the Edge browser. Maybe it works with the Edge browser in Windows. Who knows? All I know is that NVIDIA GeForce now does not work with this Microsoft Edge for Linux. Um, but Google Stadia does, so take that for what it's worth. Um, I mean, I could show you a YouTube video. It runs YouTube videos fine. Um, oh God, yeah. No. Right, okay. Let's see. Crikey, there's a lot of modern express car carrier adrift. And oh, look at that. A lot of there's a lot, of, a lot of rubbish on YouTube, isn't there? Whoa! Wow. Anyway, so let's have a look. Do we have? Okay, so that's only that's it. Seems to only be recorded uh, at seven twenty. There's probably. Let's see. Is a what about a gaming video? They t they tend to have like sixty frames per second. Um, Minecraft? Minecraft never goes out of style, does it? But Minecraft, I have no idea who Minecraft ec epic heroes are. Uh, oh, of course. Come on, adverts. Skip ads. All right, get get out of it. Oh, okay. Only 720 on that. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Oh. Hang on, is this a live stream thing? Maybe... Ah, okay. It's it, Perhaps it's a live stream thing. Uh, so we've got um, 60 frames per second here. Hmm. Let's go back. Let's go back to gaming and try something else. Let's go... Maybe Among Us, I guess. Oh, okay, we've got um, 1080 streaming there. It must be, um, I would imagine, a uh, decision on the part of the streamer then. Okay, so there we go. I'd imagine. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But um, I'm sure if I looked around, I could probably, I would imagine I'd be able to find some kind of uh, 60 frames per second 1080 uh, live stream. Uh, and Twitch. 
And the reason I'm just going to these two websites really is because uh, these two websites probably... Piano uh, was my first, I started piano. Okay, there we go. So we've got oh, more mine Minecraft. We cannot stay in Norway. Okay. That's 720, 60 frames per second. Yeah. A lot of streaming at 720. And we've got an unskippable ad for the uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I'm sure it told me. Oh, yeah, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is right there. Okay. Um. Okay. And there we go. We've got some. We've got some Minecraft going on. So there we go. Yeah, looks good. It works. Great. Um. So, initial thoughts on uh, the Microsoft Edge browser. I mean, it's a it's a browser. Just you know, it's like Chrome. It's like Chromium. It's got similarities to Firefox as well. It's a browser. Um, we could speculate over to some of the political ramifications as to why Microsoft had decided to release Edge for Linux. Um, maybe it's I, I don't know. It's tough to say. I mean, it could very well be the case that uh, a lot of Microsoft's um, uh, sort of uh, revenue streams might be coming from online services like Office 360 uh, or, um, or, or you know, like, like web apps. Uh, and if that's the case, then, well, I guess, you know, having a browser where they can make sure that their web apps, sh you know, like look the best um, and have a degree of control over how their web apps work on Linux might be something, you know, worthwhile. Uh, it might mean that, um, and it could very well be similar that, like it's similar to for the the Linux subsystem for Windows or the Windows subsystem for Linux, where what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep developers on the Windows platform by saying, look, if you develop for the for the Edge browser, then it will work on Linux. You don't even have to test it; it will just be like it, if it works in the in the Edge browser, it works in the Edge browser. If it works on the Windows subsystem for Linux, then it works on Linux. You know, like it's this idea of you can still develop on Windows. Windows is still a viable development platform and. And it might just very be very well the case that that it's to keep Microsoft relevant. Could it have something to do with the um, underlying speculation that Windows may move to a Linux kernel? I think that that's unlikely based on the amount of work that it would involve. Um, and I don't imagine Microsoft a company that's strapped for cash. Could be wrong on that one, but I think that they're doing pretty well for cash. So I don't I don't think that they'd move over to Linux for for any kind of money saving. Um, uh, practices or anything like that. Uh, maybe it could be a, a development and engineering decision, um, and it might just take a lot of weight off um, engineers from a maybe a security standpoint. Easier to maintain the security on a on a monolithic kernel like Linux. Uh, it could be, for example, something to do with hardware support. Again, easier to uh, patch hardware support to a Linux kernel rather than do it all in house, perhaps. Um, there's any number of potential reasons, but I think all, all, all that's said and done is that, to me, it doesn't seem difficult to do. They probably didn't spend too much now again, but for for a big company like Windows, they probably didn't spend the world of resources doing this. Like the 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 web engine itself is already available on on Linux, um, and and they just developed a front end for it, right? Maybe, I don't know, I guess that's the work I'm imagining has gone into it. Um, it might very well have, have just, it might have just been a, an interesting project that one of their developers might have been working on just for, you know, and, and this might have just given them some degree of rele relevancy in tech news. And it might very well, they might very well have just brought out the Microsoft Edge browser for Linux just simply so that they'd, they'd make the front page of a couple of tech websites. I don't know, you know, when these, when these companies uh, work, you know, they don't always abide by the same uh, laws and what well, I say laws like the same like forces of economics that smaller companies do like they play longer games they know that they're not going to go bankrupt next month so they can you know uh, work on projects that span greater distances or they can work on more frivolous projects or projects for the sake of, of, of PR and, uh, and 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 for the sake of publicity whereas a smaller company would have to be a lot more efficient and practical and pragmatic when it comes to uh, developing their software and putting all their resources into something. Um, 
And whereas a company like Microsoft, like it makes most of its value from its branding and its name and its gigantic presence in, in, in the tech sphere. Anyhow, this is by and large a pretty unremarkable browser. Um, I mean, install it if you wish. It doesn't seem to offer anything that is, isn't already available from like Firefox or, or Chrome that I'm aware of. Um, and uh, it's proprietary, and I'm not a fan of proprietary browsers. You, by and large, just well, I say by and large, you, you just can't trust them, really. Uh, and that's not to say that you know just because a browser is open source means that it's uh, you know completely privacy respecting or, or secure, because um, it you know that's that's just a sort of a, a sort of a, 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 a false assumption of good faith in that regard. Uh, but it does mean that a browser being open source allows you to allows it to be audited to see if it is privacy respecting and freedom respecting and and you know on that note it's always important to remember that everyone has different uh, requirements and expectations when it comes to privacy and security and there isn't a one size fits all solution this is a machine where um, I do a lot of uh, streaming and video recording on it and as such I treat it like a public facing machine and therefore I'm a little bit lax when it comes to things like security and privacy. I'm recording it on putting it on the internet, right? Um, but that's not going to be the same uh, case for uh, the computer that I used to do my online banking on and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, and also one of the things uh, is that we can talk about the security and privacy um, aspects of browsers all day long. But fundamentally speaking, the most important um, aspect of of privacy and security when it comes to web browsing is, is just getting into good browsing habits. Like, there's no point in having the, the most secure browser that you can get if you're just going to um, be completely... Um, uh, completely carefree about the information that you put about yourself on the internet and, 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 and you know, all that business. Like, um, it's... Uh, constant constant vigilance is required if you're going to maintain autonomy over your your digital life and I'll admit it becomes more difficult with every passing day and it does seem that the broad consensus of the human race is to to not be particularly careful when it comes to um, our, our private information especially when it comes to or, or, or it seems to be the consensus of the of the human race that we seem to be quite trusting of these these uh, large corporations um, or, or you know and, and and just to assume that because um, you know something has an app store in a or has has an app in a in a reputable app store a reputable app store like the Google Play Store or something like that that we can immediately trust it or or, or, or you know a lot of people n might not necessarily even realize that the information that they're giving away and what that could potentially mean like the historical uh precedence of it and 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 what that might mean or what you know what precedence might be set for should we say uh less privileged people in less tolerant countries like it's all right for me who is you know well and you know i you know I, I live in a country where i i feel quite comfortable that i'm not going to get dragged out of my house in the middle of the night for my political beliefs um uh, but but the same cannot be said for every single person in every country around the world and you know the the norms and um expectations that we set in the digital space can impact those in more precarious political positions than ourselves um but uh that's uh, a different discussion for a different day this is supposed to be a silly video about microsoft making a browser for linux a silly company oh what are they like hey what are they like uh anyway yeah completely unremarkable browser uh maybe microsoft just wanted a presence on the linux platform um maybe maybe linux is a bigger player in in this uh, or desktop linux is a bigger player in all this than we expected i don't think so i think that microsoft could operate very happily as a company pretending that Linux never exists but you know Microsoft are involved in the development of the Linux kernel whether or not we like it they do own GitHub which hosts all the code for the Linux kernel and all that business um, I don't necessarily buy into the idea that Microsoft are going to ditch their own proprietary kernel for the Linux kernel despite the fact that there are some reasons for doing so but it would be a lot of work and a huge change of pace and the potential for 
uh, quite a lot of disruption and bad press if it goes wrong. So it's it's a high risk middling reward? I mean, I don't know. What do Microsoft necessarily benefit from adopting this kernel? It might be easier from a security standpoint. Uh, it might be less work for their engineers. But again, Microsoft is not a, com a company that is particularly limited by its resources. It's one of the wealthiest companies on the face of the planet. They can afford to develop their own kernel. But then again, you know, Google looked to doing that several years ago with Fuchsia and as of yet, nothing seems to have surfaced. Maybe developing a kernel is infinitely more difficult than, um, than. I mean, it seems. I mean, it seems like it's an infinitely difficult thing. <laughs> uh, there are only a handful of kernels that can. Well, I mean, there are only really two kernels that can um, that that seem to work on a on a wide selection of hardware: the Linux kernel and the Microsoft one. Because, of course, the 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 one that um, Max use was going to be specialized to their hardware. Um, and I suppose, I don't know, I don't know what B you know the shape of BSD is, is like these days. Maybe pretty good, I don't know. Are there any BSD users amongst you? Um, you know, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd be interested to, to hear from you. But um, anyway, yeah, silly video about Edge browser. <laughs> it make a browser for Linux. What next, Skype for Linux? Uh, that actually is already available. And again, you know, not particularly remarkable. Um, is this good for Linux? I don't know. Like, I use Office 360 at work uh, for a lot of things. It's, it's actually pretty good. It's fine. You know, does the job when it comes to, to workplace things. Maybe, you know, when I'm doing my, my home stuff, I might want something a bit more local. I might not necessarily want it on the internet. To be honest, I do a lot of my word processing on in Markdown now. Much more simpler, you know barely any requirements whatsoever um can do it on your phone can do it on a desktop can do it on a laptop sync it across for sync thing piece of cake um when it comes to work yeah office 360 is fine you know the my my company have deemed it secure enough um you know and i'm on company time so i don't really you know i'll, I'll use whatever they tell me to use it's fine doesn't doesn't bother me too much um in the event where I do use my own equipment, I do tend to opt for the open source solutions. Um, but for all intents and purposes, uh, when it comes to software autonomy and software choice, I tend to, to worry more about this uh, from the perspective of a home user rather than uh, working in the corporate space when I kind of feel that those decisions and those politics are left to the relevant IT departments because they're the ones that fundamentally take the responsibility for it. If something goes wrong from a technical standpoint, you know, it's it's not my neck on the line. So anyway, that was a bit of a ramble for you. Traditional for this kind of video. But thank you guys very much for joining me. It's a pleasure as always. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.